former WWE superstar and current TNA X Division champion Mustafa Ali was backstage at AEW Dynamite this week in Chicago, leading to speculation that he may be signing with the company soon. I'm going to tell you how true that may or may not be. We're going to talk about what this could indicate for WWE and TNA's partnership as they are working closely together. All that much more coming up in this video. We're also going to have some pretty big contract updates from both WWE and definitely AEW in this video. So be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Okay, so let's get right into the news. So X Division Champion Mustafa Ali, who has been making waves in TNA as of recently was backstage at Dynamite this week. This, according to PW Insider, is the aggregation from Russell Purist. Mustafa Ali was backstage visiting AEW Dynamite Beach Break in Chicago. Now, this obviously has caused a lot of talk online about what this could indicate, what this means. And I don't want to be the person to burst people's bubble here, especially as a fan of Mustafa Ali, but... I don't think that this is any indication that he will be all elite anytime soon. The reality is Mustafa Ali lives in the Chicago area. He is from there. When companies come to town, like with that come wrestlers that Mustafa Ali that has a history with, that I'm sure he's friends with, it is not without of the realm of possibility that he simply was invited backstage to hang out with people, and that's the end of it. Now, of course, it's also worth noting that, as far as we know, Mustafa Ali is not signed to TNA on a, you know, uh, on an exclusive deal. He is working basically on, on a handshake as far as his status long term with TNA. And if that is the case, it is interesting, like, maybe this is a way for AEW to be like, hey, well, look, we know that you are one of the best guys right now outside of either WWE or AEW. You've got that superstar potential. We know you got it in the ring. He's doing great stuff with the Mustafa Ali 2024 campaign that he's running. I think that AEW would be wise to look at a guy like Mustafa Ali, look at what he is doing, look at what he has done, and do everything they can to try to get him in. Like, we, we talk a lot about All Elite Wrestling having a pretty big roster and having a lot of people that they don't or can't use for whatever reason. I think Ali is the guy right now that you cannot miss on. I, I see him all as a Swerve Strickland, like, like signing in 2022. And I mean that in the best possible way because I do think that if given the opportunity in any company, whether it's AEW, WWE, or whatever, I think he will be a world championship contender because he's just got everything it takes to be in that category. And I think that chip on his shoulder from when he left WWE, obviously there was a lot of drama that surrounded that situation. There were speculation about a very offensive creative. There was talk about, you know, or he at one point publicly asked for a release that WWE did not grant. He eventually, you know, was was let go from the company. So I'm not sure if, you know, I mean, I'm sure he would be willing to go back for the right price and right creative. Like, that is the reality for most talent, to be honest. I, I think, especially with the Vince McMahon regime gone, it is going to be a bit more open. But if you're AEW, you're Tony Khan, and you're like, hey, I have a way to kind of get these talent in here have them like see what the backstage environment is like and all that kind of stuff. Why wouldn't you invite talent like Mustafa Ali backstage? So there's that. I wouldn't expect him to be all elite soon, but who knows in this current wrestling landscape, anything is possible. And speaking of anything being possible, we also kind of have to talk about TNA and WWE. Now, there's a lot of talk online, as there is, about how is this going to impact TNA and WWE's working relationship and the reality is it's not. I do not see this in any way impacting that. Like I said before, this is very common in wrestling where talent go backstage to companies that they are not a part of or competitors and just hang out with either friends, family, etc. Like we saw it. Ricky Starks has done it. 
uh, Adam Cole, when he was signed with WWE, was backstage for a lot of Britt Baker's big matches and 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 to see his friends in the elite. Like, like this is something that has gone back a long, long time. So people like to kind of dramatize the wrestling war and say, oh, my God, this talent, they're going to sound Ricky Starks. He's headed to WWE because he was backstage. I don't think that's the case. And I don't and again, I don't think this is going to affect TNA and WWE's relationship. To be honest, the biggest thing that's going to affect that relationship is when WWE decides that they don't want to work with TNA anymore. Like, that's really it. And they could do that at any time because at this point, like, they understand that with TNA, they can get away with, you know, having some of their biggest stars on their show on NXT and give TNA, you know, just, I'm not going to say lesser stars, but stars that are not being used and who are still, like, up and coming and, like, it's really just, like, giving TNA, like, NXT names is, is really what it is. And, look, it's helping TNA. Don't get me wrong. I mean, th there's more buzz about TNA right now than there was in the months previous, especially since they fired Scott Demore. But if if we want to look at, like, you know, who kind of who's winning this partnership, who's getting the better, like, talent exchange. I mean, it's WWE by far. They got Jordan Grace. They were able to get Joe Hendry and get that big pop. Kazarian and all that. Like, it's is what it is but i mean it is interesting right you have a tna you have a tna talent who is or sorry a tna champion who is a free agent at an AEW show while tna and wwe have a partnership and let's not forget like AEW and tna i i mean i don't think they have like a working agreement anymore but they still have a weird thing where i'm pretty sure christian cage and jeff jarrett like like, like, it's like th their music is TNA music. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Like, they might have some sort of an agreement. I don't know. Everyone's working together. If everyone works together, it's better for pro wrestling. That's just my opinion. But, of course, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about all of this? Let me know in the comments as we move on to our next update. Let's talk about some contracts that are coming up or that may have been re-signed we'll get it right into that but let's go over some wwe and aew contract updates so we have a few to talk about here first let's talk about daniel garcia who is expected or was expected i should say to become a free agent later this year but according to fightfulselect.com that may no longer be the case. Let's take a look at an excerpt from that report. This is via FightfulSelect.com. Go check out the full article over there. Sources familiar with the situation have confirmed that Daniel Garcia's AEW contract was set to expire in the fall of 2024, at least as of earlier this year. Unless he's not re-signed since then, Garcia could possibly hit free agency just at just 26 years old with years of television experience on ROH and all elite wrestling TV. However, one top AEW name said that they do that they, they don't believe he's going anywhere and even think he's re-signed. This is according to fightfulselect.com and sources they have. Go support them as well. But Daniel Garcia if you didn't know, is one of AEW's, I'd like to say, like, he's the pillar of the next generation. And he has been that for a while. Like, if you go back and, like, look at this guy's story and, and, and everything he's been through with the car accident, coming back, having two broken legs, and still coming back to wrestle. And remember, that big card in Chicago at the United Center, he helped. He was part of that main event. At the first dance. That was CM Punk's first ever AEW show. And he made his uh, return to wrestling. Daniel Garcia was in the main event of that show. And, and that kind of like shows you early on the trust that AEW had in him. And, and the potential that they saw in him to put him in that kind of spot. At, like I think he was just. He was a wee lad. He was like 20. <laughs> he was a wee lad. I mean he was just like what 22 years old. So to see how far he's come since then. And. To see not only just the development of the character and, and the wrestler and how serious he's being taken on TV right now. Like he is in the middle of what I think is his best story ever. He's got he's in a, a triangle here or a trios here, like vying for the international championship between MJF himself and um, Will Ospreay. And that beatdown that MJF did on him, I think, is going to do wonders for him even more so. And look. 
the fact that he or the idea that he is resigned is not, you know, surprising. I think Daniel Garcia is one of those guys who he he understands. Like he at one point did have a WWE tryout in 2021. He did not get, you know, signed or anything. But I, I think there is that level of loyalty, and he's kind of talked about it before. Like, he, he's got, like, a, a bit of loyalty to AEW. And look, if they use him right and, and they continue to build him up, because right now the track that he's on, they're building him up to be one of their main eventers. And he's a guy who has been there, like, through weird times, through great times, and, and he has... He has always been a team player, and he's always like whatever he's done, he's made work. And and not many people in wrestling can say that, but Daniel Garcia is definitely one of a kind, one of the best young wrestlers there is. And look, say what you want, but the dance is over, baby. That that dance is over. So if he has resigned, um, AEW just spent money in the right place. Speaking of spending money, WWE also spent some money as they have now re-signed Angel Garza. Let's take a look at the aggregation from Russell Purist. Angel Garza confirmed that he re-signed via Facebook Live. Shout out to him for still using Facebook. Angel Garza has revealed that he has signed a new WWE deal. Yes, as a matter of fact, my contract was about to expire like many of you know, but I have renewed. I have renewed my contract. We came to a very good agreement that I could not reject. And yeah, we got a very, very, very good agreement. So how could I say no to that? That is, uh, in plain language, that is uh, them saying I got a lot of money and I am very happy. So shout out to Garza for getting paid. Um, This is kind of, we knew that his contract was coming up, I, I believe, like there's a uh, the other member, uh, Humberto Humbert, Carrillo, his contract is also coming up um, as well. His Legado del Fantasma uh, counterpart. So it's interesting because this is kind of continuing a trend that we've seen with WWE, like signing people very last minute and, and it coming down to the wire. Like, And look, this just seems to be the new norm in WWE. And in a weird way, it kind of gives the talent a lot of leverage. Because if you if WWE really wants to keep someone, at the end of the day, they're going to shill out the money in order to do that. But, you know, if that's not the case, then I think you're going to see deals expire. Garza was one that was very interesting because, you know, he is someone who we all understand has a lot of potential in the ring. And, and the charisma that he has, like, like he has a charisma about him. Um, it is just about showcasing it in the right way. And you could argue that ever since he and uh, Umberto Carrillo got called up to the main roster, they've essentially been in the same place for nearly that entire time. And there hasn't been too much development uh, in their characters, right? And I think in, for, if you're in WWE and you're a company that, that you know, thrives on, on telling stories with, with three-dimensional characters or just really good, well-told characters... I, I think it, you, you're doing yourself a disservice when you have a con when you have a talent like Garza, who is not developing from a storyline standpoint. Or you're not taking steps to develop his stories in the way they probably should. Like we all love Legado del Fantasma and what they do together, but maybe it's time for them to go their separate ways. And Garza is a guy I see him as. I see him as like a really big time guy, like who can be a single star in WWE. I think it's one of those things, though, he will only go as far as WWE will let him go. We'll see how far that is, but he's got some time to do that, and they've got some time to work on that because he has resigned. Obviously, many other deals are coming up. Dustin Rhodes, his deal is coming up later this fall. We also have the American Dragon, Brian Anderson, whose deal is coming up, but many expect him, I think, to, at this point, at least stay with AEW in some capacity, but... It's the summer of free agents, the summer of fun. Becky Lynch is still some hour free agent. Will she be an AEW? Who knows? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. What do you think about these re-signings? Daniel Garcia, Angel Garza, did these companies make the right decision by keeping these guys? Let me know what you thought about our first story as well. Also, be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already done so. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a daily video. Until next time. I'm Omer Q for Real Take Wrestling. Be happy, be healthy, 
Happy 4th of July, everyone in, in the United States. Be happy, be healthy, and as always, keep it real.